What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy DMO Damuto. We're back with another video today. We're watching um, uh, Patrick CC. Bad Baby got the last laugh. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, from, what I, from what I know from Bad Baby, um, she did. Um, I ain't gonna lie. You know, people destroyed her on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Met her, you know, met her all these things, memes. Uh, she can't rap, but... All you creeps, all you creeps, and she pregnant now too. And with all you creeps that bought her OnlyFans, right when she turned eighteen, is disgusting. Y'all niggas need your ass whoop. And I know some of you old fucking weirdos were buying that shit, so yeah, y'all y'all weird. But uh, shout out to um, Bad Baby, but Daniel Burger, whatever her name is, bro. Uh, but shout her out, you know what I'm saying? She getting that money. <laughs> Danielle Bergoli was the laughing stock of the internet for years after her appearance on the Dr. Phil show. Her presumptuous attitude, attention-seeking tactics, and accused appropriation of black culture just made people despise her. But it also got her filthy rich. Danielle's career was literally handed to her. But unlike most people who get 15 minutes of fame, she turned it into an empire. Gucci this girl was a child when her worst moments were being broadcasted to the entire world. Today, she is transformed into yeah, someone she who is barely pregnant. even recognized. But it was was all a part of the plan. On September 14th, 2016, Dr. Phil aired the eighth episode of its 15th season, which featured a 13-year-old girl from Florida named Danielle Bergoli. Danielle was seemingly a typical teenager whose rebellious and delinquent behavior reached a point where her mother could not control her, knife-wielding, skipping school, and stealing cars for a quick joyride. She even stole a crew member's car while the episode was being filmed. What the fuck? Despite Danielle's obvious pitfalls, people were also pointing the finger at her mother. Mom, my daughter is so out of control and provocative. Also, mom allows daughter to install a stripper pole in what her the bedroom. Fuck? But the biggest problem her mother had was Danielle's love for violence. She liked to fight. It's important to note that the show producers encouraged Danielle to be as rambunctious as she could on True. camera because it's more entertaining. Dr. At Phil one is point, a fake Danielle show. even challenged her own mother to a. Dr. Phil is a fake show. People don't. It, it, I heard he wasn't really a doctor. Is that true? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know fight on the set, but she also challenged anyone else in the audience to throw some hands. Catch me outside! How about that? Huh? Catch me outside! So, question. Here's my here's my theory on, on um, parenting, right? I'm not a parent. You know, I've been parent. You know, I got two, two wonderful parents. Um, it's crazy. Now that I think about it, yes, um, your parents need to install those great, some good values in you. When you're young, um, at, pff, as soon as possible, uh, make you, you know, give you great advice, you know, parent, make sure they parent discipline you, you know what I'm saying, when you do wrong and all that, but it is crazy, I feel like in today's society, I feel like, that's a parent, I think parenting is probably harder than ever than today, I think, because literally kids get, just get influenced by just anything they see on the internet because the internet is so fucking everywhere they can go to school be influenced by their friends you know what I'm saying and be influenced by the, whatever they see on their phone rapper uh, a bad baby whatever and like it's like it's crazy it can, like all the parenting can just go out the window and bam well you know if I go your way, parents, you know, I'm just going to be a regular person. If I go the bad baby way, like, nigga, I get so much. Or I can be famous, get this money. Like, what the fuck? Like, what you doing? How about that? Nobody wanted to go the rounds with Danielle, Shit is crazy. but these six words would drastically change her life forever. Her manufactured black scent that she claims is due to her being from the streets made the phrase catch me outside, how about that sound like catch me outside, how about that? And I don't think I've that? ever seen something more viral in my life. Your parents, maybe even your grandparents know about this iconic catchphrase. She became a social media sensation known as the cash me outside girl. Danielle was used by boomers as confirmation bias to prove that Gen Z is a bunch of entitled brats. But even Gen Z was laughing at her because they knew Knew she was their generation's jester. It was like this perfect moment where all generations, all walks of life came together to agree that the Cash Me Outside girl was a joke. The Dr. Phil YouTube
YouTube channel gained 8 million views in one month I from bet. the clip of Danielle's episode. To this day, the channel has accumulated over 200 million YouTube views just from Danielle's Damn. appearances on the show. But the crazy part is, Danielle didn't even know she was the laughing stock of the internet at the time. Dr. Phil had Danielle transported to the Turnabout Ranch after her episode. Turnabout Ranch is neither owned nor operated by Dr. Phil, but is an independent residential treatment center for troubled youth located in Utah. The ranch is a therapeutic Utah. program that aims to help teenagers and young adults dealing with behavioral and That's emotional a good place issues. Okay? Danielle didn't there. get to experience her newfound wave of clout since she didn't have access to social media or a cell phone while in Utah. After she returned home, she opened social media and was shocked. At first, I didn't know how to handle it. I was just like, my instinct was to like, cuss everyone out who said it to me. Since her Dr. Phil episode was the most successful episode of all time, I it only bet. made sense for his producers to bring her back on the show. In February of 2017, just four months after her original appearance, she returned to Dr. Phil to a studio without an audience where they discussed her time at Turnabout Ranch. She said her time there was fine before expressing that she was happy that she went. We would later find out that she was lying, and her time at the ranch was much darker and more sinister than she was comfortable admitting. She also said that Dr. Phil was nothing before she came on the show, which prompted even more people to continue making memes about the bratty child. The That's memes crazy. prompted hip-hop producer DJ Swade, the remix god, to, to make a honest. song sampling her infamous catchphrase. Swade's trap beat titled Catch Me Outside sits at over 60 million views on YouTube, That's but we crazy. realized the true power of the meme when this song peaked at number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100. A meme trap beat spent three weeks on the Billboard Hot 100. 2017 That's crazy. was wild. Danielle and her mother, Barbara, sued DJ Swade over unpaid royalties for the Get remix. Money. Barbara alleged that the DJ and his manager exploited her daughter after they agreed to let them use her voice and popular catchphrase on the record. According to legal documents obtained by TMZ, Danielle accepted a deal where she would get half of the remix profits. However, Barbara alleged that DJ Swade refused to pay them their royalties. Swade responded to the lawsuit saying, My team and lawyer already read y'all the contract several times for months, and we have everything on paper. How about that? He added, shaking my head, 15 minutes went by pretty fast, huh? Ironically, it was actually DJ Swade whose 15 minutes of fame that he got from I ain't heard from this nigga ever since. Because the world was about to be introduced I ain't to no Bad no Baby, whose fame was about to last a whole lot longer than 15 minutes. Yeah. But this break from today's sponsor will only oh, last about a minute, so hear me out. Patrick. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites that has... Thanks, Aura. In January of 2017, music manager Adam Kluger heard Catch Me Outside on the radio and knew she could be a star. He reached out and Ain't arranged no an appointment with Danielle and her mother. I said, I want to manage you. Give me some time. I'll make you a star. I'll make you guys rich. We want to make this thing happen. With no hesitation, they were like, okay done. They had no clue what that meant. Colger wanted to take advantage of Danielle's bad girl persona and take this villain, relentless, crazy attitude kid and just brand her as this supervillain. She's going to be the one that the kids have to hide from their parents. <sighs> Wanting to find a way to turn followers into money, Adam solicited the help of Dan Roof, the founder of a digital firm named Flute. Dan came on board as Danielle's digital manager, booking live appearances and setting up sponsorships. I know she teams. got all this the same shit. same week Danielle reappeared fuck? on Dr. Phil, she starred in Kodak Black's music video for Everything Alone. 1K. This video was literally just Kodak's song with Danielle flexing cash, wearing grills, and sitting on a Rolls Royce while mouthing Kodak's lyrics, which prompted the video to gain almost 50 million views. The fuck? On her trip home from Kodak, LA, what you got Danielle video boarded for? a Spirit Airlines flight where she and her mother got into a fight with a passenger. But as other camera angles were released, it seemed like the passenger was potentially the aggressor and Danielle was just defending her mom. Danielle and her friends got into fuck? another fight with she people innocent. one Saturday night in Lake Worth, Florida. Oh, they fight, fight. Ooh, get them. Then in April, she was cited for possession of marijuana in Boynton Beach. The 14-year-old was unsupervised, out of control, and on top of that being ridiculed by random people on the streets. It was a recipe That's crazy. for disaster. It also became increasingly obvious. Let me find out y'all was on the street yelling that bad baby. Or Daniel, whatever her name is, Daniel. Danielle Bergoli. Let me find out y'all's out there. Y'all weird yelling at a little 14-year-old. Even though... She needed to be disciplined. Well, she needed to be disciplined, right? 
but <laughs> that's crazy. Obvious that her mother was no longer interested in helping Danielle when she realized she could make money from her daughter's delinquency. But despite her bad behavior, she was cultivating a real fan base through YouTube, her doing YouTube, where she uploaded consistent reaction videos showcasing more of her brazen personality yeah. that were generating over one million views per video. If you had a child and a hoe tried you in front of them, what would you do? I would go to my car, turn on my car, put the air on in the car, strap my kid into their seat, and go beat the f***ing life out of that her manager also knew that she had some rapping ability. Kersey. And let's be Kersey. honest, in 2017, at the height of the Lil Pump and Lil Xan era, you didn't need much skill. Plus, influencers like Rice Gum and Jake Paul were gaining unimaginable it's every day, on their bro. terrible music. Colger proceeded to book studio time for Danielle, but she was hesitant at first. I was like, I don't want to put these headphones on. I don't want to get in this booth. But then she had a change of heart. I was like, I'm prettier than all these people in here. I looked at the people in the room and I was like, I'm better than you. I can do this. I'll be fine. What the fuck? I won't look stupid. <laughs> Soon That's she was a crazy in a meeting opposite process. a ton Ben Horan, the global head of artists and repertoire at Warner repertoire. Music Group. Ben put together a team of 14 writers and producers to work on Danielle's first professional single, Hi, I Bitch. They started her music rollout with a track called These Hoes, which peaked at number 77 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, making Danielle the youngest female rap artist to debut on the Hot 100. Okay. It also made Baby the third youngest solo artist of all time to chart on the Hot 100, behind JoJo and Stevie Wonder. The track's success led to Danielle nah. signing a record deal with Atlantic <laughs> Records. She then remixed Kodak Black's Don't Roll miss Stevie Wonder. Oh, to the a. Even her biggest again. haters could not deny her second debut Do single, not. High Bit, which reached number 68 on the Billboard Hot 100, That's while the hilarious. music video accumulated over 200 million views since its initial upload. The song was eventually certified platinum less than five months okay. later. Most people High on the beach. internet were calling her music trash, but the numbers didn't lie. Plus, she wasn't afraid of criticism. She's low key smart, okay? I'm not gonna say she's smart because she's a little bitch. I'm a little bitch. I'm a bitch, but you're the one sitting in the busted ass chair with your busted ass forehead with your busted ass face and your busted oh, I was clicking that nigga. So why are you coming for me rappers like lil yachty voiced their support for her career which was followed by a collaboration titled gucci flip flops that peaked at number 79 on the billboard hot 100 before receiving a platinum certification her string of success led to bad baby receiving a nomination at the 2018 billboard music awards for best female rap artist nah. alongside Nicki minaj and cardi b That's over crazy. the next few months baby collaborated with artists like ty dolla sign yg lil baby City Girls, Charlie X, I didn't hear another song after, uh, She announced her Band in the USA tour across North America and Europe, where she sold out various 150 to 500 person venues in nearly every city she visited. Okay. That's crazy. But whenever she had some positive momentum, she would revert back to her old self. In peak 2018 tomfoolery, uh, Bad Baby Whoa, Vicky, runs into her arch Lil nemesis, Tay. Whoa Vicky, accompanied by the infamous Lil Tay for a good old fashioned scrap. I remember scrap. this shit. But all we got was high pitched screaming and standing behind grown men pretending like they actually wanted to fight. Come on, touch me. I want you to hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. If you hit me, I'll hit me. I'm right here. I'm right here. You coming out of me, so you hit me. Yo, the internet around this time was terrible. I remember this shit. The Woe Vickies, the Lil Tay, the Bad. It was. What year was this? 2018? 2018 was a terrible. I ain't gonna lie. 2018, 2019, I feel like it was like a bad era on the internet. Like, uh, the fucking. I think the pranks was terrible. It still is. The fucking just YouTube was terrible. It was just a bunch of memes on top of memes. All these char all these people just collabing and doing these terrible ass skits. It was, bruh. Let me know what y'all remember. Y'all remember that shit? Like, like I think that's when uh, what that nigga name? Boot game. I think around this time, boot game. Fucking fat boy said she was just going around harassing niggas. I, bruh, it was. Just, <laughs> this was huge news at the time, but this would not be their final battle. Danielle announced a six-month deal with Copycat Beauty, getting paid $900,000 to promote the brand's products on her social media and music videos. She then signed a 12-episode deal for a reality show called Bringing Up Baby. The show premiered Bringing in February of 2019 baby. on Snapchat as one of their many Snap Originals. The first episode showcased her life behind the scenes and the hurdles she encountered amid her rise in the industry. This show reportedly earned over 10 million viewers in its first 24 hours. 
To compare, at the time, Keeping Up with the Kardashians was only getting one and a half million views per episode. What? TMZ reported that Danielle made well over $10 million during 2019 due to her reality show. And although many still saw Danielle as the snobby kid from Dr. Phil, Man, she capitalizing that money. on five mad seconds of fame, Fuck the fan base she gained was undeniable. Maybe her fans saw her as a troubled teen who was misunderstood and taken advantage of as a child. Maybe they didn't see someone desperate for attention and rather someone who was unapologetically themselves, but there was no denying that she she was still a loudmouth kid who always managed to find her way into trouble. At Cardi B's Fashion Nova launch party, Danielle decided to throw a drink of water on Iggy Azalea. Iggy seemingly had no idea what happened, nor did she really seem to care. It looked like Danielle pre-planned the attack while hiding behind her bodyguards and trying to make a spectacle, what but Iggy fuck? did not cave. Danielle claimed that Iggy was talking crazy about her on Instagram. She was referring to a Shade Room Instagram post that asked, who is going to see Bad Baby on tour? And Iggy commented, are you? Iggy responded to the incident. I get that this little girl has made a name for herself acting a damn fool on television and online. But I'm a grown up. I'm not about to waste my energy on that shit or be fighting a kid in a club. Azalea handled the situation like an adult, just right. making Danielle look even more childish and immature. Danielle also had a habit of making drama about her when nobody was directing hate towards her in the first place. That's crazy. In an interview with People, Jermaine Dupri, legendary songwriter and record producer, expressed his disappointment with the female rap game. They all rapping about the same thing. I don't think they're showing us who is the best rapper. For me, it's like strippers rapping. While these comments triggered responses from several women in the industry, right. Baby specifically replied, Jermaine Dupri can suck my d Been like 10 years since Bow Wow. Sit down, Grandpa. Since Danielle was on top of the game, Best. she was able to no. run her mouth. Look, she wasn't top. Jermaine, look, Jermaine Dupree, when he talked about female rappers, I'm pretty sure you did not come to my bad <laughs> baby. I'm pretty sure. Look, you had some successful. Hey, look, I can't deny you had some successful songs, and that's amazing. Shout out to you, nigga. But that nigga was not mentioning you. You, that nigga was not thinking. You talking about Cardi B, Meg, The Stallion, and. Them types. Nah. Bro, girl, you was, they up here, you, 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 hey, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Respectfully. The charts, but her music videos and songs were still accumulating tens of millions of YouTube yeah, views. Shout out. And yeah. she was consistently collaborating with every major industry rapper, but she was burning bridges with people who might be able to help her once her hype dies down. And as we approach 2020, people were getting really tired of Bad Baby, but they did enjoy seeing her get beat up by her biggest op, Whoa Vicky. Yeah, a brawl between fun. Danielle and Whoa Vicky occurred during a recording like, session in Atlanta. Like. TMZ got a hold of the footage from the fight where it seemed as though Vicky got the best of Danielle. Baby later took to social media saying, anyone who says I got beat up is delusional. This girl ain't hit me one time. She grabbed my hair and somehow ended up on top of me. The whole time my face stayed untouched. Every normal person observing this situation is wondering why these girls are hanging out with nothing but grown men who are filming them while they physically assault each other. But once Danielle posted a video to Instagram wearing box braids, the conversation around her cultural appropriation finally needed to be discussed. People were noticing Danielle slowly transforming her image and accused her of blackfishing. Because she was sporting traditionally black hairstyles and even tanning slash darkening her skin to a point where some people might even mistake her as non-white. This look Danielle is going for is now considered to be the beauty standard in pop culture. However, for the longest time, I black see, I see people, them, specifically white women, black all women today were demonized and ridiculed for their hair, skin, AAV accent, and all other physical features that they were born with. Now that black women's natural features are being praised in our society, white women like Danielle can just put on a wig, tan their skin, get lip fillers and surgical procedures to reap That's all crazy. the benefits of being black, but also just transform back into being white whenever they want. Danielle addressed the criticism with an Instagram story. To all the black females that are saying my hair ain't meant for box braids, guess what? Y'all hair ain't meant to be straight, but y'all glue wigs onto your heads and sew Brazilian, Indian, and Peruvian hair, which is anything like your natural hair texture. She then goes to deny the cultural appropriation and follow that up with, I love the way I look, plus your man agrees. And we all know I look fine AF with any hairstyle I do from <clears throat> any culture because I'm just that girl. I hope y'all bald-headed hoes stay up all night oh, thinking shit. about this. Every time she opened her mouth, it just got worse. Yeah. I don't act black. I don't... I don't talking about who wants to be black i don't understand that after this controversy she <laughs> remained pretty quiet until summer of 20 <laughs> who wants to be black she said that like 
the way she said that. I, I, okay, I'm gonna get a benefit of doubt. I, I don't think she meant it like. <laughs> she, she probably did. I ain't gonna cap. But uh, <laughs> who wants to be black? Oh my, that was terrible. 20 when news broke that she entered a rehab facility at an undisclosed location where she'd received treatment for a combination of things, including childhood trauma and substance abuse in the form of prescription pills. Her management team told TMZ, We are very proud of Danielle for recognizing that she needed help and seeking it out. Following her release from rehab, Danielle continued her journey of healing and self-development when she posted a YouTube video breaking her silence about the Turnabout Ranch. Dr. Phil, I am going to give you from now till April 5th to issue an apology, weird, okay. not only to me, but to Hannah and any other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this. And if you don't, I'm gonna handle things my way. Danielle had played the villain character her whole life, and now she was starting to gain sympathy from the internet. Danielle was inspired to share her story after a woman named Hannah Archuleta came forward a month earlier, claiming that she was sexually assaulted by a staff member at Turnabout Ranch. Hannah was also sent to the ranch by Dr. Phil in 2019 when she was 17 years old. Wow. The Turnabout Ranch is one of the many wilderness programs that take place in rural Utah. If you watch my video about Chet Hanks, who was also sent to a Utah camp, or if you watch the Netflix documentary Hell Camp, then you know all about the horrors of these programs. But if you don't know, wilderness therapy programs are a major part of the multi-billion dollar troubled teen industry, which also includes therapeutic boarding schools and residential treatment centers. These programs are designed for adolescents struggling with issues like drug dependency, depression, poor grades, low self-confidence, ending thoughts, and eating disorders. The idea is to isolate them in the middle of nowhere America to remove them from their privileges, then provide therapy and give them wilderness experiences like hiking, camping, or working on a ranch in hopes that it will allow them to recognize how good their home life actually is. That's crazy. However, these experiences mostly consist of doing manual labor for hours on end, and over the years there have been hundreds, thousands of reports of staff members abusing, hazing, humiliating, sleep depriving, sexually assaulting, drugging, and doing I some bet. of the most horrific things to these teenagers. Danielle experienced and witnessed similar horrors during her time there when she was just 13 years old but the worst of all was witnessing a murder. a murder one morning i was cleaning up for breakfast and one of the seven was sitting right next to me and she had her walk on her so i heard everything uh, one of the kids he had tried to steal a car or something everyone was screaming on the walkies like it was really crazy and he ended up killing one of the staff members they made all the kids that were at rowdy come down what? and then they didn't they told us not to tell us anything a day later they have us all, all every kid that's at turnabout they have us all in a circle and they're like listen there was an incident i know some of y'all heard it over the walkies jimmy died and you would think that with such appalling accusations that dr phil would denounce the turnabout ranch uh, we don't have anything to do uh, with what happens with guests once they leave the stage. I mean. But he just played dumb. However, Danielle proved that Dr. Phil is in fact involved with the people he sends there after the show. My mother signed a consent of release of information to send progress reports directly from Turnabout to the Dr. Phil show. So when you say you don't have any feedback from them, that is not true. Danielle added that she doesn't believe that okay. Dr. Phil is unaware of what really happens behind closed doors at the ranch. Plus, a murder did take place at this ranch. You would think that at the very least, Dr. Phil would stop recommending it as a precautionary measure, Hell but no. he continues to praise the ranch. We sent this young woman to uh, Turnabout Ranch, which is a very serious, responsible place for kids to go to get their values straight and get their heads on right. Try to be an emotional compass and point parents in a direction. What the f direction is that? Sexual abuse, murders, and, f and torture? That's that's the direction? Oh, I ain't seen none of this shit. Start your to-do list, parents. Have your kid watch somebody get murdered, have them get sexually assaulted, and have them get tortured. They'll come out great. Damn. Even if Dr. Phil is innocent, maybe he should consider investigating these facilities before yeah, using his massive platform to endorse them. Which is why people conspire that he might have some sort of financial interest that benefits him every time a child is sent to the camp. It was after this expose that the narrative surrounding Danielle's Dr. Phil episode and her whole persona started to change. She was 13. Wow, this is 100% bad parenting on the mom's part. I feel like Danielle was wronged her whole life. Also, she was 13 years old and to be judged and hated like this instead of loved and nurtured on national television. That's just setting her up. All this time, I thought this child was crazy. Now I realized it's her mom. Despite Danielle reversing her reputation to the public, Bad Baby was broke. 
Nobody was interested in her music anymore. She had exhausted all of her antics to get attention and she potentially burned bridges with people who could have helped her music career. Now she was only being seen as any other influencer on the uh, internet. There go. was only one thing left to do to make a big bag. On April 1st, 2021, six days after her 18th birthday, Baby launched an OnlyFans account that earned over $1 million in revenue in the first six hours, including over 700 Y'all niggas pay $24 to see Bad Baby naked? You know she ain't responding to y'all niggas, right? <laughs> she got a whole team. $157,000 from subscriptions, $267,000 from message payments, and $5,000 in tips. Less than a month later, Baby claimed that she racked in over $50 million on OnlyFans before showing off her newly purchased $6.1 million home in Florida that she Crazy. allegedly bought in cash. People were initially suspicious until she posted an income report with the caption, Go cry about it. The screenshot showed a gross income of 52 million, with Baby taking home a net income of over 42 million. The main realization that people had from this was just how many thousands, maybe millions of people who had sexualized this child since she initially showed her face on the internet. What do you think your situation was that like made you pop off like that? Well, I was kept covered for so long. And people might probably make an excuse like, oh, maybe the guys that, all the guys that did are probably 18 or 19, whatever. No, nigga. <laughs> it ain't that many 18, 19 year old people just buying that, doing that. You know what I'm saying? These some old perverts, nigga. Old ass men was waiting, waiting for it, bro. Right? Like with the, how they were making me dress and shit. And I was young. <laughs> it's so creepy. It I is, mean, it's, it's creepy, but at the same time, like I'm not one of them people that's like, oh no, pedophilia is fine as long as they're like a little bit older. Like no, like no. I still think it's weird, but at the same time, 18 is 18, and that's what they said it was. So that's what they said it was. Danielle fully realized that it was because of her young age and being sexualized during her youth that allowed her to secure such a large fortune. Like the news came out about how much money you made. Every people from so many different walks of lives that I knew were like, I'm getting an OnlyFans. Her success inspired millions of women around the world to try and do the same. Unfortunately, almost none of them will even have a fraction of the success that Danielle had. Nope. Danielle admits that she doesn't think this career path is 1 billion percent okay, but she got rich off of it, so she was willing to justify it. Now at age 20, Danielle has secured generational wealth. She's done with the antics, yep. done with the attention seeking, and done being made fun of on the internet. Now she is seemingly settling down with a man who is not famous, and they are expecting their first child in hey, 2024. Shout out to her, man. Shout out. All her controversies and antics, most people thought that she would end up broke, alone, and regretting her choices. Instead, she ended up filthy rich and settled down with a family. They laughed at her, but it looks like she's the one who got the last laugh. Man, shout out to Daniel Bergroli, man. Uh, getting that money, you know what I'm saying? Getting that money. And she's about to settle down with a family when she pregnant, so shout out to her. Uh, she probably had a rough ass childhood, you know. I probably couldn't imagine, you know, just being all, you know, being ridiculed for, I would say just being a teenager, but I'm pretty sure she did some crazy stuff when she was a teenager and shit. If you, you, and we need to stop like making excuses for teenagers. Like, oh, it's, oh they're just teenagers. Teenagers go, like, nigga, no. Nigga, nigga, I knew what I was doing when I was a teenager. Like, I knew what I was doing. Like, like I had a conscience to know, hey, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should do that. And people say, oh, that's probably just good parenting. That is true. But at the end of the day, like, nigga, I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. You know, you know, I just, I just knew about the consequences at an early age. You know what I'm saying? So, so any teenager watching this, make sure you know the consequences when you do, when you think about doing something risky or something, you know what I'm saying? When you're young, you know, because shit can't follow you for the rest of your life. So anyway. Shout out to Daniel Bergroli. Shout out to Patrick CC for this video. Make sure you like, check out the last Patrick CC video. And make sure you check out a, uh, another video right here, you know, about some about somebody. You know what I'm saying? And make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.